Christian Ditter, you directed and executive produced Girl Boss. Why should people tune in? Oh, well, because it's like a really fun, inspiring show. And um, I think it's like, you know, inspiring for girls and, you know, entertaining for guys. Like, I'm a guy, obviously. And so um, when I read the script, I was like, you know, immediately, okay, I want to do this. This is really exciting. And I wanted to read, you know, the uh, second season, uh, second episode, which wasn't scripted at the time yet. So that was also reason to sign on to get early access to know how it's going on. Okay, so you've never worked on an American series before. So how did you come to be associated with this project? So uh, Kay Cannon, the showrunner, um, who's an amazing writer, she was um, she played a little part in my last movie, How to Be Single, and she played a woman giving birth, and so she screamed all the time uh, during the entire scene and so our mics peaked on uh, on set and so when we edited the movie we had to bring her back in to do the screaming again like in a you know more controlled environment and so um, we did ADR so additional dialogue recording and when we did that the next guy was late and so um, Kay asked me hey can I see a little bit of the movie and so I showed her the first 20 minutes of the rough cut of how to be single and so after that I walked her to the parking lot and on the parking lot she said hey listen I just signed up uh, for a Netflix show uh, would you mind reading uh, the script uh, of the of the uh, first episode and I said sure send it over and I sent it uh, I read it overnight and so I called her the next day and say, hey, this is a great script and, you know, I, I love it and it's really funny. And so she said, okay, do you want to direct it? And I said, okay, sure. And that's how it all happened. And then, you know, uh, Charlize Theron, who is the producer, uh, one of the producers, uh, she needed um, to sign off on it. So the next day um, I went to New Line, the producers of How to Be Single, and said, hey, um, Charlize Theron wants to watch How to Be Single. I know it's not finished yet. <laughs> I know the film's not done, but can we, can we send it to her? And so they agreed on it, and then it was like really a very surreal situation um, that you know Charlize would watch my unfinished movie. But you know, thankfully she liked it, and so that's how it all happened. Cool. That's not what I expected. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, from the title, this sounds like a series that's uh, very consciously female centric, and you know, all your fellow executive producers are women, uh, except for you. So, yeah. how do you feel about that? Well, you know, it's like I have I have two daughters and a wife, so it just felt like home, uh, basically working on this. And and you know, it's like for me, um, I've been asked this quite a lot. And and when I signed up for it, I that you know, I wasn't even that wasn't even part of my you know thought process or consideration because I just like to work with you know uh, talented people and 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 funny people and. Um, the gender, if they're male or female, that really comes second. And I just like, when I was in it, and I was like, oftentimes the only guy in the room, I was realizing, okay, hey, I'm actually the only guy in the room. But, but you know, it wasn't like a conscious choice. And it just felt like, you know, working with other talented people. So, um, yeah, but it was fun. I read in initial reports that you're only supposed to be directing the first episode. Uh, so what did you establish as the look and tone of the show for other directors to pick up on? Well, you know, that's like, I think part of what, what Kay responded to when she saw How to Be Single was that, um, you know, despite the genre is comedy, um, it's, you know, not just like talking hats. Uh, I, I, I grew up on on, you know, films like, you know, Back to the Future and all the Spielberg stuff and, and all these, you know, more, more cinematic films. And I, when I, you know, made my first, um, you know, if you want to label it as a romantic comedy, I thought, okay, you know, that doesn't have to look necessarily like, like a romantic comedy that can still look like a movie. And, and that was the goal also for, for Girl Boss because Sofia Moroso, like who the, our show is based on, you know, she, she did something you know, that like vintage, uh, selling vintage fashion online, which a lot of people have done before her, but she was extraordinarily su successful because she did it like in a, you know, with a different spin because she she added a style to it and didn't just, you know, took pictures of clothes on hangers, but, you know, put them on herself and took pictures that were, you know, um, showing how these things could look like and, and distinguished her her website in that way and we wanted to do the same thing with with our show and and you know that's i think um what what i brought to the table that we that that i said okay um listen how can we make 
the show the equivalent of what Sophia did um, for her business? How can we distinguish the show visually from, you know, all, all the other shows that are out there and, and you know, make it like um, attractive to watch and not just because it's fun, which it is, but also, you know, because it's like, it looks like a movie. And did you read uh, her book uh, upon which the series is based? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, of course I read it, but I have to admit I read the script first. So I read mm -hmm. the script first and then read Sophia's book and, and you became a, a fan of the book later, was a, a fan of the series first. Okay, so you stayed on as executive producer and ultimately directed five episodes, I believe. Yes. Um, so how did you come to that arrangement? Well, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's funny because when, when you are, um, so originally I signed on to, to direct the first uh, three episodes, I think. And then, then um, um, when you are like the, that much part of the show and, and you like, you know, we, I started very early together with Kay and Laverne McKinnon, the producer, and, and Charlize, and we sat down and we said, okay, how does the show look like? Who, who's going to play it? You know, so we did all the casting together and, and we chose all the locations. And, and it starts off, you, I start off, it becomes your baby. That sounds weird and like a cliche, but it is like kind of true. So you start like owning it in a way. And, and then it's just, you know, hard to let go. And, and it's like, it becomes important to you. And, and I just, you know, felt like, um, you know, it's, it's as much my show as it is Kay's show and Charlize's show and Laverne's show. And we just wanted to see it through together. And so they asked me if I would stay on longer and, and, you know, guide it to the end. And, and that's what I did. So I stayed on until, you know, the very last color correction of, of all the episodes, not just my episodes. And yeah, so that's how it happened. You have a couple of movies coming up. So would you be staying on for a second season if it were to be ordered? Yeah, well, I would, I would love to, like, it would be hard to abandon and I don't want to abandon it. So I would, you know, if, if a second season gets made, I'd love to stay on and, you know, hope schedules work out that way. Now, unlike uh, showrunner Kay Cannon's past series like 30 Rock and New Girl, this one's on Netflix, so you guys don't really have any time constraints. So how mm -hmm. do you make sure that when you're in the editing room, you're not just, I don't know, going too long? Well, you know, the, that starts with the, with the scripts, uh, like with the length of the scripts. They all are like between 20 and 30 pages. So, you know, you can't make 60 minutes out of it and you can't make 10 minutes out of it. So just by the page count itself, the, the length is kind of, dictated and our aim was always we were always like aiming at you know 25 to 30 minutes and that's you know I think what we film for most episodes and then you know in the editing room itself we the luxury in doing a Netflix show is that you you don't have to you don't have to hit that number 27 minutes and whatever many seconds it is you can just say you know what the episodes feels a little bit too long so let's shorten it a little bit or you can say you know at this moment here, we don't want to rush it. We want to, you know, stay in it a little bit longer and explore it a little bit deeper maybe. And then you, you, you can go a little bit longer. And, and it was just important that we don't, like that an episode isn't like over 30 minutes or, you know, less than 20 minutes so that audiences don't feel like, oh, what's it's over already or oh, this gets boring or something like that. And so we just edit it to the point, like each scene to the point where we thought, okay, this is the right length for the scene. And then the episodes just landed between 20 and 30 minutes automatically, basically. So the whole show is coming out on Friday. And is there anything that you can't wait for people to see, like a specific episode or scene? I, well, you know, so I love, I, you know, love every episode. And I think every episode, and I think that that's what makes the show, uh, show special, is, is very different. Like we have like an episode like, that's uh, told backwards, like the movie Memento. We have an uh, episode that, you know, just follows another character later on and not Sophia. So you expect to stay with Sophia and then camera just follows like another character. And, and uh, we have episodes that, you know, are, are entirely focused on two people and we have episodes that are focused on, on something else. So it's not like a formularic show. And I think that, um, um, variety makes it exciting and so I'm excited for people to to watch it as a whole and not like a specific episode because I think if you if you watch all 13 episodes all of them together are you know one story and and um, yeah I'm, I'm excited to see how people respond to that uh, how conscious of you guys were uh, 
Sorry, how conscious were you of other shows that are, or other movies that are kind of adapting the early 2000s and rises in the tech industry? Not so much. Like we, like our our references weren't like other shows or movies. Our references were very, very like we we started literally with a um, a stack of photos of Sofia Moroso's photos. I I've asked her very early on, hey, can you open your drawer and just you know show us all the photos you have of that time? And because she was taking so many pictures uh, of herself and clothes and stuff like that, and also because she likes uh, photography, so she is like a photographer too. Uh, you know, there were tons of them. And that was like when we had our very first meeting, I, I put these pictures on the table and said, okay, you know, this is what our show should feel like and, and should look like. And so the production designer, costume designer, everybody, um, you know, together with Kay and Laverne and me, were around these photos and said, and we said, okay, um, this is what we want to capture, the spirit we want to capture, you know, that time in San Francisco, which is very different than San Francisco as it is now. Uh, but this is what we want to, you know, try to recreate, and that was our starting point. And we didn't look, in, you know, obviously I watch other series and other uh, films, but we didn't go like, okay, this is a series we want to uh, uh, emulate, or this is a series we want to stay away from or something. We want to cre create our own thing. I feel like with shows, people always uh, love to hear about how there's like a master plan and everything was very well plotted, but they also like to hear about uh, whether anything was changed along the way based on how things were working with different actors. Do you have any of those kinds of stories that you can share? Well, um, like when I signed on, there was only um, the, the uh, script of the first episode, and there was like an idea, obviously, of you know, how the season uh, will work out, but the other scripts you know, weren't there uh, yet. And so what happened is when, when Kay um, um, you know, in the writers' room, they wrote the screenplays. At the same time, we did the casting uh, and and you know, like did the you know, found the locations, designed the sets, and so on. And I think because we had all the writers, you know, where also the production office was, um, I, I do think that inspired you know, like there was you know, our casting choices inspired the writers and and the other way around. And it was also oftentimes that that you know the writers and 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 Kay wrote you know parts specifically for uh, an, an actress they knew and and so with the hopes that the actress would say yes then you know for for like like you know appearances for one episode or something like that so i think it was a very um you know we always had open doors and i think you know the process was inspired in both directions and it wasn't like we were going in with a master plan and then just drawing by the numbers as we we're doing it um you know i, I think Kay had a very strong plan of you know where how she wanted the show to be and and you know was also very open to inputs that came along the way now we're at emmy's website do you have an idea of what episode you're going to be submitting for outstanding directing consideration um i think we're gonna submit the the um the first episode for that yeah okay and can you speak further to that decision uh, you know, it's 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 tough because I I do really like all the episodes, but I do think that um, the the first episode sets up um, you know the entire world. We we then you know continue moving through with the other with the other uh, episodes, and I think you know a lot of work for that reason went into the first episode, and it's probably closest to my heart just personally. And so, um, you know, it's hard to choose, but you have to make a choice, right? And so I, I think we're going to go with the first episode. All right. And finally, can you tell me about these movies that you have coming up? Um, sure. I, I mean, uh, yeah. So, so I, do have, I do have two movies with New Line um, that, you know, are, are coming up. And um, I, I can't tell you too much about it, uh, but one is like, uh, based on a uh, based on a book, so it's a family it's a family story, uh, which is um, you know tonally um, it has a little bit of a little bit sunshiny kind of feeling. Uh, so it's a, it, uh, you know it's it's a very nice story. And the other story I really can't tell you much about. Uh, it's a it's a, a disaster movie. It's called States of Emergency. And um, um, yeah, the, the plot is kind of under wraps, so I can't I can't really uh, say anything except that it's going to be <laughs> really cool. <laughs> so, yeah. OK, well, uh, thanks very much, Christian. And best of luck with the first season and also the Emmys. <laughs> Thank you so much.